Okay, so I'm just going to run through the PowerPoint here on water and the water cycle. Now, water, um, you know, there you can see the water in three states, solid, liquid and gas. So look again at the way the, the particles of a solid are arranged. So you can see the water molecules there are close together, very little movement. Whereas in a liquid, they're a little bit spread out from each other. And in a gas, they're much further apart, the molecules of water, and they're able to move around freely or much with, with, with greater speed, if you like. Now, some properties of water, you know a lot of this, that water boils at 100 degrees, water freezes at 0 degrees, water is an excellent solvent, water has a density of one gram per cubic centimetre, and water expands on freezing. So you might have heard it before in cold weather where the pipes would burst because the water would... Um, would, would um, freeze and it and, and it expands and then and then the pipe the pipe bursts. You can see there look there's an expansion of water experiment there where you have um, a glass bottle full of water and you put it into the in, wrap it in a plastic bag into a freezer and as the water liquid water freezes it expands and the glass cracks. Okay. Test for water um, that the blue cobalt chloride paper turns pink. Okay, it's a test for water that we might use. Water generally clings to the glass at the sides. So in narrow tubes, like in a menis, you know, in a graduated cylinder, you can see a, where the water clings to the side of the tube. Um, then it curves up a little bit. So that's what's called a meniscus. And when you're reading uh, volumes of liquid accurately, then you would read the bottom of the meniscus at eye level, okay? Now, there's two videos there now that you might have a look at. Now, I, I know you do a bit about water cycle in primary school and that, so you probably know a lot of that, but have a look at the videos anyway and see what you think. Now, this is the water cycle. So you'll start off with evaporation. So water from lakes and oceans and rivers and um, the heat from the sun causes those that water to evaporate and that evap that 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 water vapor or gas or steam goes up into the into the air condensation then so you've got the gas in the the water vapor that collects in clouds and as the clouds rise up and up they get colder and colder and then they condense back to liquid water then as the clouds collect with more and more liquid water, they can't basically hold on to all of the water. So the precipitation occurs where it rains. Now, you know, with precipitation, you can have sleet, you can have hail, you can have snow and you can have water. Infiltration then is where the water passes down into the ground and then run off. Um, you have water going into the rivers, lakes and oceans again. So just to go through those stages again there now. So evaporation is stage one. Changing of liquid water to gas or steam. Okay, requires energy from the sun to change the liquid to gas. Because you know the particles of the liquid have less energy than particles of a gas. So if you want to turn something liquid water to gas, you need to give it energy. So the energy um, it comes from the sun and then the particles um, have more energy and change into gases, okay? Condensation then, um, so the water vapor rises up, 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 and collects, as we said, in clouds. And as the clouds rise up, they get colder, and the liquid water is formed in the clouds, okay? That's your condensation. So remember, evaporation is going from liquid water to gas, and condensation, you know, sometimes if you have steam hitting a cold window, you can see condensation um, on the window. So um, condensation then is where you've gas back to back to liquid again. Precipitation then means rainfall, really. So water is held in the clouds. And then once they get full of water, if you like, then they release the water as rain or sleet or snow, maybe, or hail. Infiltration is when the ground, um, the, the water, sorry, hits the ground and soaks into the ground and down, down through the rocks. Um, and you, it collects in the ground to form ground water. And then runoff is the draining away of water from areas of, of land. And the water eventually again then ends up in the rivers, lakes and oceans. The last um, stage then is transpiration. So transpiration is where the plants lose water from their from their leaves. And that's how plants actually cool themselves down. It's a little bit like us sweating, I suppose. So the, the liquid water requires heat from the plant tissue. And that heat, cool, as, as the heat changes the liquid water to, to, to gas, it cools the plant, um, the plant down. So it, in terms of the processes that... Add water to the air, okay? So look at the processes now that add water to the air. Evaporation, 
okay because the liquid water from the from the lakes and the rivers and the oceans turns to vapor that goes up into the air transpiration which is the loss of water vapor from the leaves of trees and burning fossil fuels would be another one because when you burn hydrocarbons like coal oil gas fossil fuels you release carbon dioxide like we spoke about in the carbon cycle but you also release water vapor okay and then what processes take water from the air well precipitation be the main one there you could make your own water cycle if you like i tried this before where you just get like a clear plastic ziploc bag draw the water cycle on the outside of it with a marker add a little bit of water to the bag and then sell it up to, to the window and you'll see the stages of the water cycle happening um there now you can try this question into your homework copies now please that was an example